am currently at an undisclosed location in one of the big cities in the United States where peaceful demonstrations are now taking place. Very peaceful. Ah! Pay no attention to the peaceful explosions all around me. Ah! Holy crap, it's just celebrations of peace. I think I was safer as a suicide bomber. Ah! I went out to be arrested. And, and as a result of my daughter's advice, I have five and a half hours of recording of the police bringing guns into my home. laughing that, oh, looks like being a good Samaritan is going to get her a gun charge. Sydney Vizard for Rebel News, and today we're bringing you an update to the story of the Coots Alberta blockade that alleges RCMP impropriety with regards to seized weapons, weapons charges, and conspiracy charges laid against people in the Alberta border town of Coots last February. At a recent event to commemorate the one year of the anti-COVID mandate blockade, Coots local Joanne Person took to the microphone to share her story. Joanne was arrested in the early hours of February 14th, 2022, after the execution of search warrants by RCMP. So a search warrant was conducted last night in the air by, it was at approximately midnight, 1230, where three trailers associated to a group that had arrived separate to the original protesters, but in, ended up being a part of this whole situation. And this group, we conducted a search warrant into three trailers associated to them, resulting in the seizure of weapons, firearms, ammunition. Joanne was charged with possession of a weapon for dangerous purpose and mischief over $5,000. On January 16th this year, her weapon and mischief charges were dropped at request of the prosecutor. And on January 28th this year, she announced she may have evidence suggesting the RCMP planted weapons in her home. Rebel News is not suggesting that the RCMP planted evidence at the home of Joanne Person. We haven't seen or heard Joanne's evidence at this point of this recording. We're reporting what she says as newsworthy, and we will continue to stay on the story as it develops. And we will do our best to independently confirm any allegations made in today's video. But nonetheless, what Joanne is saying is another part of the story of the Coots blockade that you should hear. With that, you have the basics of this story. Diagalon exists as a meme. Right. Uh, for roughly how long before the Coots arrest, because I've got to hold your feet to the fire, Jeremy. There was a Diagalon I've got, badge. I've got boots on, I'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> the we, It was January 21, I or, jeez, my... Is, is it like did, did it exist for a year or a month before uh alberta it was during alberta. the so it would have been january 2021 would have been yeah. we called it d-day dag day it's a january 15th or 25th the joke is i don't remember none of us remember we were all kind of drinking and i was high so it's like it's whenever in january something that i feel like it's like it's the 18th i guess today's the birthday i don't know yeah well <laughs> it, 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 it had it had some time to develop into its yeah. different levels layers yeah, so we had a flag we and then we needed a national anthem we need uh we had so we had our own salute we do this we do this one because it's the slash flag you know that's cl that's, cl that's close to uh the other <laughs> yeah exactly Apparently. isn't it it's almost tempting it's almost gaslighting people to do certain things in certain in a certain way and they started you know suggesting that um um if these people in the anti-hate network which astroturf this entire narrative and this entire story which in my opinion was later picked up by intelligence agencies and given to the government and the rest is history um so that that was what they were doing and then they would do things uh so what i would started doing um, again and this is purely for the intent and i've always stated this and there was i started saying find your friends you know find the others a friend of mine said it was a it was a young quote or i no, i can't remember it was, it was a it was an old uh, psychologist quote it was to just find the others um, you need to find your peer group, your people, because again, we're living through this time of uh, division and segregation, stay home, stay safe. Everyone's very feeling very isolated and depressed. We had uh, a party essentially out in Saskatchewan of a bunch of people came out uh, that were, you know, fans of the followers of the podcast and the community and stuff. And I was just uh, off to the side getting something. And I was observed 45, 50 people, most of them total strangers before today. And they'd been uh, drinking together all night. Everyone was smiling. Everyone was laughing. Everyone was happy. And I was like, we need more of this. This is this is what we need to do. We need to bring this back. 
So I started saying, find your friends and find the others. So I, I created these uh, groups on Telegram for as many as I could in each province. Like if, so if you're watching me and you're in BC, I guarantee there's, there's lots of other people in BC that, that are into the same things that you are, or if you're in Alberta, wherever. So go there and, and say, Hey, I'm, you know, you guys want to get a coffee at such and such a place. I'll be here at this time. Go find, is, go out there and do it. So that's what they did. Jeremy. And then the, is, and then the anti-hate network started saying, Oh, you know what he's doing? He's building a militia. There's a network of, of extremists forming here. No, 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 now, now I'm just putting it all together because when they called it a militia network, yep. this is like, it, it's like, it's almost like fight club, uh, where, where yeah. except yes. it's, it's, it's diagonal club. club, dag club. Yeah. <laughs> and now, and now this is, this is the mil, uh, the militia network across the country where you mm -hmm. guys meet up and discuss yes. how you're going to take down the government. Okay. Yeah. So they, uh, so they start saying these things. And I, one day that with this infamous picture that I love that they use that I took and edited specifically, um, I was like, well, I guess, look at this. I guess we're a militia guys. Hey, we're a militia well, now. Let me see like, if I oh, can we, pull that one up. Let me we see got these skull masks. Yeah. And we got the Daglon flag. Some guys said they're shotguns and stuff. It's Saskatchewan. What? it's alberta right so it's like bring yeah. yeah bring it and off to the side of the photo is like 50 people with their kids and they're like blowing bubbles and eating hamburgers and all this kinds of stuff is it on the page it's not on this one it's the one did you did you censor over the eye yes oh, here, there it is just, there it okay. is that's me on the bottom left there so we got it's like put these masks on guys and then i did redacted over this and the media took it and was like why you know people published it and were accusing ctv of protecting our identities and it's like tell them ctv <laughs> that you took it Tell them that you took it from my Instagram page and the caption was something like, I guess we're a militia now or something like this. This was intentionally to gaslight them and we were making fun of them. And then they took this as evidence that we are what they'd say they are. So I was like, people are getting worried at this point. And I was like, there's nothing to find. No one's doing anything illegal anyway. So when they, if, if they do, or if they are stupid enough to send the police, which they have, and there's, it's ongoing, they're going to spend millions of dollars looking for nothing. And who's going to be the asshole then? Look at this, uh, Jeremy. I uh, just reading the the caption: Diagalon members posing in skull Mask. masks with yeah. firearms and That's the right. flag of the Diagalon movement. In a live stream episode, Mackenzie claims this image was as taken as a joke to yeah. poke the Canadian anti hate network. Well, well, well done because it poked them. He added <laughs> that he is the individual squatting in the bottom yeah. left. Yeah, it's it's, and then people are going to say, people. It, it, someone's going to be inspired by this. I mean, these are, uh, Jeremy, may I ask the obvious question? Sure. These are, they have to be, if this is in Canada, legal yeah. hunting rifles. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. Everything there is. None of them are mine, you know, but, uh, but, and it's like pose, pose with a, with a dead buck and that's fine, Yeah. but mm -hmm. make a joke with the firearm. And, and this is by the yeah. way, it's dangerous. It's risky to make these types of jokes because the yes. media will pretend not to get them when they want to. Like the yeah. time they, they took seriously a uh, Maxime Bernier tweet, that the government had been infiltrated by Maoist communists, and they said, "Oh my God, he's crazy." Yeah. Um, so you do. It, this. it may very well may be that may be the case. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, know if he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, just a, just a, let, let me let's just go through that for one second. This this is the article, uh, and this is from June. Oh, it, it, this is the new one. So the old one said a, a racist neo-Nazi uh, militia is what we used to because these are the experts, right? These are the experts in these kinds of things. Um, and now it's a joke, but it's not, but they're neo-Nazis, but they're not, but it like yeah, we're inventing to... terms now. I think they've invented the term accelerationist just for me at some times. I'm well, they, they, they invented they, it specifically for me. They create, once they get, it's, it's the same thing with the AOK -okay hand gesture when the ADL yes. fell for the 4chan meme, they've got to make it real after. So this is what they've got to do. Conclusion. It is important to understand what Diagalon is and what it is not. The plot to carve up select regions of North America into a new counted superstate is at its heart yeah. a meme. Oh, That's okay. not what they used to say. What Diagalon has become. Let me just highlight this so I can. Oh, what's it become, Peter? However, is both an actual and symbolic banner under which participants of this movie, movie, sorry, movement can rally and self-identify. Okay, so <laughs> I haven't heard anything wrong yet. But this is after two pages yeah. of diarrhea. It's after yeah. two pages of diarrhea. Yeah, it's um, very bad. The community is a cross section of trolls, shit posters, <laughs> content creators, conspiracists, survivalist enthusiasts, and extremists. <laughs> Imagine being enthusiastic but surviving. What a maniac but, thing to do. I, I, by the way, shit posters? I mean, anti. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know no. what that means. But God for God forbid, by the so you're you're you're, you're it's a cross section of jokesters and the undefined extremists. And but what I love, this is what I love. Ideological violence, ideologically envy. I, 
Yeah, but uh, what is ideologically, it, ideologically motivated. motivated violent extremists? Uh, yeah. People have to just stop and, and, and flesh that concept out. Ideologically motivated means politics. Yes. Uh, violence, we don't know what it means anymore because words are violence. Extremism, mm -hmm. it is nothing but a way to uh, yeah. relegate political adversaries yeah. under the IMVE. But yeah. Extreme to who? Much you know, like subjective. the Boogaloo movement, Boogaloo is a is a, is another word for civil. Was war. also kind of just a running internet gag, you know. It's a, it's it's been every nobody. It's, it's like okay. when everybody in the '90s was saying "wicked," you know. Look, like, but, but just listen <laughs> to what they're actually saying. This is what anti hate after their research, after their hit mm -hmm. piece. Much like, and the I Boogaloo like to point movement. out also, they watch everything that I do as well. I mean, minute to minute, all of it. And then, and I, because they take a snippet out of like, I mean, three hours, right? And it's at exactly two hours and nine minutes. And like, so somebody is watching absolutely all of it. So it, I would forgive them if it was like, they saw a clip that someone took out of context and that's what they're writing about. It's different when they know that you're watching everything that you do. And I've uh, explicitly taken great, uh, you know, care and time to explain to people every so often, because there's always new people coming in. We're not neo-Nazis. Nobody's a white supremacist. None of this is true. You know, and they just ignore that. Well, I, and, saw, uh, let, I saw. And they're, and they don't print retractions. They didn't say, we're sorry we said this we messed up no no they're just going to update they're going to paint over the old paint with a different color and and try to act like no one's going to notice it, it's it's so absurd because i saw a video it was a montage and I, I think i saw a black canadian i don't even like looking at skin color because it's irrelevant but i think mm -hmm. i saw some videos with black diagonal members and then yes, they're gonna say oh those are. The, those are racist blacks those are anti-semitic jews it's, just, it's just, okay but hold on because this is fantastic much like the Boogaloo movement, Di Diagon uses irony and memes to build an offline insurrectionary <laughs> anti-state network. Network, mm. anti-state. So by the way, it's not to say if you don't like the Trudeau government, you're insurrectionary and anti-state. Yes. And remains attractive to adherence of militant accelerate. This is verbal diarrhea. Yeah. yeah. Thus, it is not and, and explicit. The, the, <laughs> the Ottawa government pays these people, by the way. It says oh, yeah. openly right on their website they, they uh, subsist on grants uh, from the government of Canada. Yeah, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Thus, it is not an explicit ex terrorist movement organization because <laughs> it's memes and shit posters by your mm -hmm. own definition. But this does not prevent terrorist plotting or accelerationist <laughs> violence from emanating from within the diagonal movement. Yeah. Let's get to the big, let's get to the big, <laughs> it's, 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 it's mad. It's Jeremy. I, it I hurts. I, I approached this with skepticism that maybe you are Tyler Durden looking to <laughs> upend. I wish. <laughs> uh, it, it, that's, that's what the anti-hate says, but we've got to get to the unfortunate facts. Uh, the coots, sure. the coots blockade, the coots arrest. And for those of you who don't know, this is the only, this is the only link that the media has, where was it? Where was it here? Here we go. This is the only link that the media has that a, there was an alleged arrest, alleged mm -hmm. conspiracy with these individuals to kill an RCMP officer. It's, it's categorically bad if the allegations prove to be true. Nobody needs to say it except for idiots. Nobody needs to be called mm -hmm. upon to condemn criminal activity. And sure. the only people asking to do that are idiots. If this is true, very bad. It's, it's, it goes without of saying. Of course, of course. Um, they, they, they found a cache of weapons, apparently mm -hmm. away from the individuals. The details will emerge after their trial or during their trial, which is scheduled for 2023. But where you get in trouble, Jeremy, one of them attended one of your events, mm -hmm. from what I understand. And if yeah. everyone looks down here, can you see my cursor or no, yeah. you can't. There's a vest, people, uh, right above this scary looking, looks to looks be like a, an MCR. Yeah. Uh, I can't pretend to. right next to the machete. Yeah. There you go. There's a lot of, there's a lot of strange, uh, I mean, I don't want to get into it now because it would take a long time, but a lot of strange characteristics about some of these firearms that would suggest they were slapped together by someone that has no idea what they're doing, which I found interesting, but uh, I, I can't pretend to have that much of an expertise. I, uh, I, I know uh, duck hunting rifles. I, uh, mm. I took the course, uh, but the, so that vest people <laughs> under the table, if you see those two black things, they appear to be a diagonal patch. Yes. And one of the individuals, if I'm not mistaken, it's left, right. It's Chris Carver. The guy uh, on the right there, Chris Lysak. Oh, it's the guy with the camo shirt yes. on the far right? Okay. Yep. And then you got Ben Stiller from Dodgeball in the middle here. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I, I, I don't even know why I thought that. Just That's uh, looks like Dwight uh, Jerry Griffin. Morin. Yeah. So these four people are charged. Uh, the one on the right apparently attended a get-together, was a mm -hmm. Diagalon adherent. Um, yes. Look, there's, 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 these guys are they're facing charges, but I mean, Jeremy, that's the connection. What do you have yeah. to say that your, yeah. your Diagalon movement actually... Out, out of the thousands of people who watched you, one of them allegedly, he hasn't been convicted yep. yet, is alleged to have been part of a, a conspiracy to commit a crime. Do you know the guy? Do, yeah. do you have, 
Okay. So what's, what's okay. The, what's so the I met him twice. Uh, great guy. Nice guy. He had his uh, kids with him. Seemed like a really uh, loving, just, attentive Jeremy, father. You just, you just gave him the sound bite. You just gave yeah. him the sound bite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we, he was at, we had some barbecues the two times and, uh, I had a photo with him once cause he's enormous. Right. And this is like, he's just, I, I can't remember how tall he is, six something and probably 370 pounds. He's an, an incredibly large man. Uh, and I looked it up. He was bigger than Brock Lesnar. So <laughs> I had a picture with him and, uh, it's just me and him standing together. And I was like, for con just for context, like I'm about 200 pounds, but five, nine and a half. And I look like a child compared to this guy. So it's like, obviously he's the, he's Dagalon's head of security. You know, that was the joke, like a bouncer that you would have at a bar or something, right? And the media were like, we've captured his head of security. They thought they had, you know, uh, captured Martin Borman or something. It was like, it was, it was a joke. Okay. Anyway, um, they're out there. You know, the Coots thing is, is ongoing. I'm in Ottawa at the time. And, um, you know, I'm just kind of watching it, you know, on the news like everybody else. And, uh, and then all that happens. And I was like, here, you know, here we go. Someone, someone showed it to me right away. They're like, look at the vest. And I was like, oh, here we go. So the first thing uh, is these aren't, um, there's th those little patches. A friend of mine had been making them and selling them. Thousands of them are, are out in the world somewhere. And these ones weren't even those. These were homemade. Um, I, I later found out by someone else who just wanted to make their own um, and was just gave them out to people. And, you know, it was kind of a, would it be any different if they're wearing? Is, oh, it's a, it says the Montreal Canadiens on his on his jacket. Are the Montreal Canadiens involved? Hold on a second. Let me pull that up. <laughs> let me pull that up. I'm gonna fact check it. No, I don't know that we'll see that, but let me see if I can't actually diagonal on. Oh, I'll, I'll go check after. I, I can't find. The what are you trying to check? Oh, whether or not there was a, a Montreal Canadiens. Oh yes, I don't know. I don't know, but I, you know, they were like, "Well, what, what do you have to say about you know what of this connection?" I'm like, "Was there a Waylon Jennings CD in any of these trucks? Perhaps Waylon Jennings is involved in some capacity." Did, did he I mean, have I a copy? Did he have a copy of Catcher in the Rye in his hand? Yeah. Do, do we go and after? Like, and in all seriousness, I mean, it's been how long? Like, and there's been no arrests from anyone else. There's been no, no, no one. The police didn't even ask me a question. No one has approached me. No, nothing anywhere. Um, there is no connection. If there was. You know, what's, what are you waiting for? What's going on here? There isn't, there isn't one. Um, I don't know what went on out there. Hopefully that's not true. Um, they maintain their innocence and because, you know, I, I choose to believe them. Um, what we'll see if it turns out that that's not the case. And like, there is a lot of evidence, like this is a very convincing, compelling case that they were planning, you know, to, you know, kill a bunch of cops. Then obviously that, yeah, that then it's, then it's warranted. I don't think that's the case, but if that is what turns out to be to be true, then yeah, obviously, because that wasn't the intention or the goal of any of these any people that I talked to anywhere of any of these uh, pro. I mean, you were downtown in Ottawa, and from what I understand, out in Alberta it was much of the same sentiment. It was like we're here, we're not moving. It's simple. It's that simple. As a Coots local of the blockade, which lifted COVID restrictions in Alberta and catalyzed the former premier's resignation from politics. Happy anniversary! I'm so proud of every one of you for speaking your truth and standing up for freedom. Our God-given rights. Let's never forget that. And there's no authority greater. On January 27th last year, I found out from two older residents who lived in my little border town there was a convoy of trucks coming to Coots. My first question to them was, should we make lunches? And we did. We built 84 of them and people just kept dropping off hundreds more to my vehicle. Um, and I was out there all day loving every one of you. I baked 27 dozen cookies and the three of us made 84 lunches to give to the truckers. And the cafe made hundreds more. I loaded up my car with a sign saying, we love you truckers, free food and water here. So did many people, it was amazing. It was one of the best days of my life. I spent a lot of time crying that day, tears of joy, for the hope that filled my heart. Because I think for all of us, we were losing hope. I realized I wasn't alone and the desperation I had been feeling was shared with thousands of people who felt the same way. I've been teaching for nearly 30 years and I saw students whose lives were being destroyed and, and plagued with uncertainty and despair. Teenagers and even some younger were committing suicide. A member of my ex-husband's family was one of those children. I was heartbroken. I felt helplessly bound like we all did by the restrictions that were put on us. All of us but my heart ached for the young men and women 
who saw no other way out. And it's still an epidemic today. Nobody knew that our tiny village would double or more in population when the truckers came, including many of the men, women and children that traveled in the convoy. But most of the people were in, who live in Coots were overjoyed with their presence. Our mayor, not so much, but the rest of the town, yes. The weather turned bitter not long after the arrival of such wonderful people. Some people were stranded in their trucks due to the weather and the distance that they were parked from the saloon, <clears throat> where the truckers and protesters gathered for meals and prayer and discussions about the madness and the mandates. I've always taken care of those who are in need and the convoy was no exception for me. There was a need to bring hot food and drink out to people who could not get to the saloon uh, for whatever reason, to get their necessities. I started driving through the parked vehicles, honking my horn and offering hot food and drinks. I loved my self-appointed job and came to love many of the people there that I met. Some called me the coffee lady. By the end of the weekend, I had a father ask me if his sons and his son and his friends could move their trailer onto my lot and get them off the highway. I have a big yard full of gravel, so I said yes. A trailer with five young men became my immediate neighbors. A day or so later, Chris Harbert asked me if he could move his trailer onto my yard. Again, I said yes. I saw my yard as a safe place off the highway for people to have their trailers, and why not? I had the room. From that moment on, I left my door unlocked so they could come and go for use of the bathroom or a hot cup of tea that was always available. By day four, I met a family who had a little girl who was down with a bad cold. I talked to her mom and said that I would be more than happy to take care of her and help her get better. I became friends with her mom and her family and we remain friends to this day, right Corey? <laughs> of course the shower was available to all who stayed at my property, but it wasn't long until Corey asked me if she could give my number to a few people because the saloon was getting, in her words, a little bit ripe. Of course I said yes and from then on I added the task of making sure towels got washed twice a day. And I also became a laundry service uh, with the exclusion of folding. That was my deal. I'll wash them, I'll dry them, but you fold them. For many people that came thinking it was a weekend thing, never packed a second pair of underwear. So I loved my job. I loved doing, I loved it every minute. We had community building. Of course, the shower was available to all who stayed on my property, and many, many others. I met Walter, wherever he is, I see him standing over there, one morning as he pulled up and loaded me up with donuts and muffins and coffee to take around to folks down the line. Thank you, Walter. I still thank you, and I'm sure they do too. It was exhilarating to be a part of history in the making and to stand up against the oppression we were all under. The police presence in town was growing daily and there was constant tension as police tried repeatedly to incite reaction from the peaceful protesters that were standing up for the rights of all of us. I'm so proud of the true Canadian spirit that grew out of love for each other. No one bought into the games being played by the RCMP. Everyone kept the peace and stood strong against the tyranny that we had been living through. Twice I stood on the road and stopped a convoy of police cars that were speeding through town, ignoring stop signs. I feared they would end up running over the little ones who were playing in the streets or walking around our community. I brought this up at our, our town council meeting because the police were not obeying their own rules. It seems to me that to uphold the law, you must abide by the same laws that, and uh, of your authority, or your authority becomes moot. The night of the raid on my house was a terrifying experience. I got out of bed for about the fourth time to be sure. I had the last load of towels ready to go for morning, the coffee set up, 
and I saw blue and red lights flashing everywhere, all around my house. I freaked out, to tell you the truth. My cell phone rang, and it happened to be a police officer on my cell phone. I didn't know what was going on, but I was frightened and worried for my safety. The first person I called was my daughter and told her what was happening. I called her on my landline with the police on my cell phone. My daughter Suzanne spoke with the officer who lied to her and told her I was not being arrested, but that they were there to search my house. I told them I would go up to my car and sit where it was warm and they could have full run of the house. They told me they'd have to detain me. My daughter was furious and accused him of lying to me, which he had. But my daughter is a very smart woman. In fact, that's her last name. <laughs> She's told me, Mom, don't hang up the phone. Just set it down on the counter. Just set it down and leave the line open. And I went out to be arrested. And, and as a result of my daughter's advice, I have five and a half hours of recording of the police bringing guns into my home. <laughs> laughing that, oh, looks like being a good Samaritan is gonna get her a gun charge. One guy warmed his pizza up in my microwave. Um, I was brutally manhandled that night. I have a torn ligament in my shoulder, bruised arm, damaged wrist, broken teeth, and a hernia rupture. I was put in a freezing cold cell that was filthy with pathogens from blood, spit, and feces. I was denied my medication for my heart and blood pressure. I was threatened that I better not buzz for help again or I would be in trouble. EMS was eventually called to take my blood pressure, but nobody told me the results. My heart was racing and I was in a cold sweat. I actually feared for my life and prayed. I prayed I would see my son and daughter again. My car was damaged that night. On the, on the audio recording, my alarm went off and there's a big dent in the passenger side of my car. My guess is they threw somebody else against it. My home was damaged and ransacked. It was disgusting behavior by the very people who were sworn to protect us. I was told they could vaccinate me when I reached jail because I hadn't been vaccinated. I just politely said, no thank you. And while in the glass cubicle I was in, they made me wear a mask, even though there was no way of contact with others. I was strip searched in an effort to humiliate me right before my release. And all I could think of was, wouldn't their mothers be proud? And began a long journey of defending myself with the incredible help of Stand For Thee founders Jane Scarf and Rebecca Shepherd. My charges have been dropped and the words dangerous and weapon will not follow me through my life. So thank you Jane and Rebecca. I think it's time to release the recordings to the lawyers who are defending these men. And let the law stand and not bow to the legal system. This is in the works now. I will be doing a press conference in the near future, and it will be open to all media, both the government controlled and the independent press. Mainstream government owned media, CBC in particular, cost me my career of almost 30 years by reporting false information about the events, the events of that night and slandering me. The mayor of Coots referred to me as a domestic terrorist, which resulted in harassment from several people. RCMP drove back and forth past my home the night I was released from jail with a spotlight. It was like being in a gulag. Um, 
every 10 minutes, my friend, Shell, filmed them. This is not something that should happen in our country. I've heard many people say that to look at the Canadian flag, they feel shame. Well, folks, I feel proud. We all should feel proud. The truckers and the convoy of 2022 made me prouder than ever to call this country home. You people and what you did and what we are all still doing has sparked a fire around the world. Every person knows the Canadian flag. You lit a fire and today we stand together to continue fighting for all of our tomorrows. All of these little people that are our tomorrows. They'll carry the love of this country and their fellow men and women forward in a world of freedom that we all desire. Delightfully loved ones, if he loved us with such tremendous love, then loving one another should be our way of life. John 4.11 Thank you all for walking in the light of truth. This country and all the men and women in it are worth the effort. God bless you all and hold the line as we move forward in love. Thanks for tuning in everyone. I'm getting some breaking news. It turns out the world is ending and we're all fucked.